Celeste is reading a novel in French by Jules Verne. Our route to the moon was pleasant and elapsed without incident. As we approached the surface, we saw a large cylinder with a cone-shaped tower atop it that stood roughly the height of three men. Aye, said Bobby Kane, the advance team built our facilities to perfection. From this newly built base, we shall conduct operations to answer the question, what substance is the moon made of? Okay. Gertrude enters from the kitchen. They're here. She exits into the foyer. Celeste puts down her book and composes herself. Here we are. Help yourselves to the casserole. Why don't I help myself? I'm supposed to help myself to a great many things from now on, apparently. I suppose we'll just have to jump right in, won't we? Does anyone move we come to order? Celeste, this meeting of the Cheyenne Women's Educational Society will come to order and does anyone want to discuss the events of yesterday? I don't want to get started. Uh, you better start. Well, I just can't believe it. I guess we're going to be voters. Suffrage. Suffrage, indeed. I fear for the future of this territory. Do you know what happened? I thought Campbell was going to veto it. Everyone thought he was going to veto it. He was supposed to veto women's suffrage. Rose told me. He came into the office and said, I think my wife should be able to vote. And then a half an hour later, he signed it. Wow. Hmm. His wife. I bet he just wants to make sure they vote Republican. Well, score one for the suffragists. But I spent all last night thinking of ways that we could minimize the damage. I think we should continue to educate. I mean, I admit it, we probably lost a lot of people who just don't like politics. I hate politics. This whole time, I've just been looking forward to getting this issue over with. But I spent the morning looking through the papers William Bentley Fowle left us. Now, he left a play about the dangers of suffrage, and I think we should sponsor a performance. I mean, it's a good way to talk about the issue besides the old three-hour lecture. You know, Alice, if I may, um... Yes? Well, it passed. We opposed it, but it passed. Isn't it important for us to get together and try to make it work? With the radicals. I think Celeste's French heritage is showing a little. Je suis Française, moi. <laughs> Look, I know we didn't want this, but I'm not going to vote. You're not going to vote. What has really changed? I think Celeste has a good point. I mean, everybody knows that women's suffrage is just a scheme to get more women to come to Wyoming. Well, that's the worst part of this. Uh, this could be the end of womanhood entirely. Before you know it, women will go about wearing pantaloons and frittering in taverns, and children will think that is all normal. What about our traditions? What about our privileged status? Once women are wallowing in work, that'll all be lost. Celeste sighs to herself. We hear an imagination cue, and the lights start changing, focusing around her. She takes a glance at her Jules Verne book and starts day daydreaming. And women don't even need the vote. We know we have more influence with the power of our femininity than we would get in the street brawl of politics. Celeste imagines that she is a space explorer in a future like the one depicted in the book. She is dressed in futuristic pantaloons and has two crew members, Barbicane and Nicole. And so the mission moon base was begun. Our hydraulically powered mega driver will descend into the moon's crust as though it were a moist cake. Will the moon turn out to be made of a heretofore undiscovered iron alloy, like Barbicane believes? 
Perhaps Nicole will be right and it will be made of green cheese after all. <laughs> Nicole stammered bright red, reminding us that he made that remark in half jest. Then Barbicane brought forth a wager. Men, I have a small territory in the Southwest with which I've become reacquainted after their recent war. It belongs to whichever of you can correctly guess the substance of this moon on which we stand. Several minutes went by as we composed our answers. I myself was afraid to discharge my true opinion, so I said I believed it was made of steam. I'll see who that is. Celeste pulls herself back to the present. And if they ever do let Wyoming become a state, it will be too late because by then we will have become just this refuge for advocates of free love and Catholics. Celeste, are you listening? Yes. Yes, I'm listening, Alice. I go on about this because I care. I know. We have a guest, ladies. Becky enters, a prominent town suffragist. Tension in the room. Hello. I didn't know you'd be meeting today. Well, it's an emergency. Yes. Um, I'm spreading the word around town that our group is throwing a celebration tonight for suffrage in the territory. And I felt you should at least be invited. Oh, nice of you. It's at Jackson Field. Oh, the fiddler Bobby H is coming up from Outvan, so we'll have dancing. It, it doesn't look like we'll get an orator. <laughs> Though I guess you're glad to hear that. <laughs> it will be very neighborly. Thank you, Becky. We'll consider it. Governor Campbell might stop by, though. Well, I don't want to overstay my welcome. Yes, you'd better. Good day. I can't believe her coming to my house and inviting us to something like that. I think she was trying to be the gracious winner. Governor Campbell might stop by. Well, let's not get distracted. I'll wire about the play. Wait, wait, hold it. Celeste has the floor. Well, I was going to bring this. Celeste takes out a pamphlet. I got this from Elizabeth. She said, I saw this and thought of you. Moon lecture? There's this lecturer up from Cleveland who gives a talk about the moon and kind of the latest theories. And he's in Casper till the end of the month. Well, let's invite him here. Isn't this the kind of thing we're supposed to be doing? I mean, we're the educational society. But for the last four months, we've been acting like a, you know, anti-suffrage society. Celeste, I'm sure we have enough money in the treasury to do both events, but I really want to do the play first so people will carry it with them in the months ahead. I doubt that's possible. Our treasury is very low. Time for another bake-off? That would be the fifth one this quarter. We probably have enough money to do one of those two events. Well, the play would bring in money. <laughs> Anyone opposed? Lower your hand, Celeste. <clears throat> I just think... Uh... The lights change. We hear the moon drill operating. On and on the drill went, its magnificent steam engine puffing as it continued. What treasures would be uncovered? I was so excited, I confess, I nearly lost consciousness. The drill lands on something below and gets stuck. With a deep, tinny thwack, the drill stopped. It had clearly reached some impasse that its mighty power could not clear. What do you think that is? Scarcely had he asked the question than the surface started to rumble. A break in the ground opened up from the mighty drill, and I dare say had not Barbicane pulled me to the side, 
I would have been a dead man. Look! He exclaimed. I followed his gaze to an incredible sight. Right where I stood, a flood of creatures was erupting from the moon's very surface. They were small, grayish in hue, hardly more than half a meter tall. They were covered in a sloppy paste, emitting a noise halfway between a squeak and a hiccup. Unbelievably, we could hear their sounds, even through the fully transparent tra spacesuits we were wearing. But how to communicate with these moon men? Celeste comes back to the present, but this time is still wearing her explorer's uniform. Well, I just think, you know, it sounds like we could, could use an event to get back some of the people we lost with the politics. And here's an event people like. Maybe you could start your own little science fiction society. Jules Verne is very popular. He has a new book out in France that my cousin just sent me. Uh, yes, but will people remember him the way they'll remember a scholar like William Fowle? Anyway, this isn't science fiction, it's science. It's the moon. People love the moon, you know? I have nothing against the moon. I just wonder if it's relevant to the public. Oh, now that the war is over, people are a lot more interested in science. They want a new frontier, and they look up and they see the moon. They want to rebuild. They want the chance to do something new. Hmm. It would be a better thing now to do than the play is, because elections aren't going to be for another year anyway, and we can do the play anytime. But the moon man, he could be gone by next week. I do admit I'd like to talk about something besides suffrage. I guess I could use a break too. I guess they won. We'll just have to muddle through. We'll manage. We'll have to. Let's change. It was rough going at the start. Within three or four moon days, we had cobbled together a shared working language of about 200 words. By the time we had to return to Earth, we had agreed to explore trading Earth water for some of their moon metals, which could unleash boundless energy. And which of us three won the wager? Well, we talked it over on the trip home in the orbital vacuum tube. Because our mission was interrupted, though pleasantly so, we only were able to explore a small pebble of the moon and so could not say with certainty what the full amount of it contained. That question would be left for other men. It was maddening, but Barbicane, Nicole, and I must content ourselves with the small amount of progress we had made. There would be other missions, and there would be other men and women. Lights change back, but Celeste hasn't returned to her seat. So I'll wire Casper and Gertrude, if you could present your treasurer's report for the next meeting. All right. Meeting adjourned. Good night, everyone. Good night. End of play. <laughs>